Hi everybody and welcome to episode 3 of May Google Be With You. Today we're going to have some creativity fun using Google Slides. Now Google Slides is more than just a presentation software where we're using SlideShare. We can use this as our publication tool, a collaboration tool, and even an assistive technology tool. So today we're going to focus on a brand new feature that's slowly been rolling out through the month of April and of course May and that's using audio in slides. We're also going to look at how students can collaborate and create and work on projects together. We're going to make our own animated GIFs so that we can showcase the process of learning. And we're going to have a little bit of fun telling some Star Wars eye-bombing perspective stories and even use voice typing. So go ahead and grab your laptops and your Chromebooks. Just know that all of the resources I'm talking about today are posted below this video so you can copy those templates and try them with your students right away. So the first thing I want to show you is how we can use Google Slides as an excellent collaboration tool among our students. Instead of having to assign 32 of the files within our Google Classrooms, we can actually assign one file and we can allow students all to be able to edit the same one and simply choose their own name. Now here's a little activity I like and it's called eye bombing. What eye bombing is, is when you take googly eyes, you stick them to everyday objects and you tell a story. Now in this particular case, I was inspired by Star Wars and the Gonk Droid, that garbage can style robot that was not the droid they were looking for. So I thought students could use this. They can take googly eyes, stick it to everyday objects like garbage cans and staplers and water bottles, and they're gonna take a picture of their droid. Then they're gonna tell a story of why these droids are not the ones the Empire is looking for. Or perhaps they're just gonna tell any type of story or adventure about it. Now what's really fun is I have some samples of some student work in here where they were able to write some perspective stories from their eye bombing creations. Students will simply go ahead and they'll take a picture of their object that they put the googly eyes on and then they're going to go ahead and they're going to insert that on one of their slides. Now you can see here I have many slides available so that students can go in and they can choose their own slide and add their name. They're going to insert the picture of their thing that they just took the picture of and then they're going to be able to tell their story. Now one of the things that I really like is that even though there is no voice typing that's part of Read Write or built into Google Slides, we can voice type right here in this, the speaker notes. So students are able to choose the language that they're voice typing in and they can just click to speak. My name is Gonk. I'm a garbage can robot. I am not the droids you are looking for. I do not translate 127 languages, period. So you can see the students have a lot of fun being able to just tell their stories. They can put it right there in the speaker notes and then if they like, they can even just copy and paste that up into the body of the slide. So give that a try. Now let me show you how we get everybody collaborating in here. Now if you don't want it to be the Wild West or you know the crazy space conquest of kids going in there and on each other's slides and deleting, you can also use the, the procedure where you assign students a number. So you know whenever you do cl collaborative slides, uh, Trish knows she's always slide five. I I just know to go in there, that's the slide I'm going to do. It does take a little bit of practice to get kids to learn to collaborate, but thanks to revision history, we really can tell who's been on what slide, who's typed what. And so we're just going to use those um, features where when I'm ready to share this with my class, I would assign it in the Google Classroom as students can edit. In this particular case, I would change it here in the sharing features, but because you're assigning it in Google Classroom, you don't need to have to worry about that. When you add the template, you're just going to say students can edit. So that one is really um, handy to be able to do in order to share and have kids working on this together. The next thing I want to talk to you about is creating interactive stories. Now these can be interactive narrative stories. I'm going to show you one that was created by students called The Treasure Hunt. But it can also be interactive like posters or magazines, factual information. And what it simply is, is how we can have either an image or words that's linked to another place in the presentation. And we simply do that with hyperlinks. Just like I would create a link to link to an outside source, I'm simply creating a link to an inside source within the Google Slides. So let me show you what it looks like with our interactive butterfly um, Google Slides presentation. In here, I have the life cycle of a monarch butterfly. What will happen on my landing page, I've asked people to be able to click on the correct image to choose the life cycle. I'm going to select that image and what I want to do is insert a link. You can do that a couple of ways. You can use the shortcut in the menu bar. You can type control K 
and you can say insert and link. They all do the same thing. What you'll notice is that I do have a slide for each different one that I would originally want to be able to link to. So you gotta make the slides that you're potentially going to link to. Linking is the last thing you do. So now I come in here, I'm going to click my link button, and instead of pasting a link like I normally would to an outside um, website or something, one of those says slides in this presentation, and now I can go ahead and link it to the appropriate slide and it will become active. Now, I can see that simply by clicking it here, or if I'm in presentation mode, now I'm going to see that interactivity, so I can click and it's taking me to that slide. These are really exciting for kids to be able to build themselves, and they have a lot of fun putting these together. You don't have to only do it just for stories. You can do things like making your own Jeopardy game. This template comes to us from Eric Kurtz, where students are able to click and it'll link them to those particular slides. Now they can type and create their question. And then of course click to see the answer. And so it's really exciting for kids to be able to create perhaps their own game board as a, as a study tool, a review for an exam, as opposed to having to simply type notes. You can see this as a story uh, from student work found from Alice Keeler called The Treasure Hunt, where students created the background of the slides, they put some text on the page, and now they've created some choices within their story for where you'd like to go based on what you've done. So it's a really, really fun opportunity for students to get quite creative because they have to make the decisions about where the content is going to go, what's going to click to where, what do they need to know, how are they going to link that. And so give that collaboration a try for students to work together in those environments and as well try having them make some interactive adventures. Now the next thing I want to show you is a brand new feature that has slowly been rolling out through the month of April and May in all Google domains. And what that is, is we can finally, finally insert audio into Google Slides. And so this is a feature that's been a long time coming. Now what I really love about this is we have the opportunity to use the audio for so much more than just background music for a presentation. We can use this where kids are creating their own stories, narrative stories, or audiobooks. Maybe they're creating a podcast. We can have students being able to show their work and then explain a math concept and have their voice beside it. You can also have that edit mode where everyone can contribute and you can have students be able to leave their comment or audio on a particular slide to be able to show their understanding. And teachers can even use this as well. Imagine being able to look at student work and leave an audio comment right on their slide knowing it's from you. It's also a powerful teaching tool for teacher directions. You can have your teacher direction slide and you can also leave some audio feedback tips and tricks for your students. So it's a really easy feature and the neat thing is, is we can use any of our MP3 files and I have a free online recorder tool that I'm going to share with you that requires no account, no sign-in, no storage of student data. You simply record online and save it to your OneDrive, your Google Drive, wherever that is that you're saving it, and then you're able to use it. Now, in the particular case of Google Slides, if you want to insert that audio, you do have to make sure that you get that audio into your Google Drive in order to have it inserted. So I'm going to show you what this looks like with an activity that I call Start with a Picture. I like students to be able to look at pictures, mathematical concepts from everyday life, and I want them to be able to have a conversation about what they saw. Now what I'm going to show you is my free online recorder tool that I've also included a link for below this video. So what I have here is just an online voice recorder, and what you can do is just click the button to start recording, no account required. What I want students to look at is the condor and the whale. So in here I have some examples of different real life images that I want students to be able to have a conversation about and I want to be able to have some accountability for them. So I've assigned this Google Slides for them in our Google Classroom and what the students are going to do is look at this image, then they're going to use the online voice recorder to record their thoughts. You simply click the button to start recording. You may have to enable to allow to use your microphone. I think that the whale is bigger than the condor because in real life I know that whales are really big even though in the picture the bird looks bigger. I think it's just because the bird is closer. Students can pause the recordings and they don't have to do it all in one take which is really nice to help them process their thinking. When the students are done they can simply hit stop. You also have some trimming tools so if I really wanted to get rid of some dead air, some pause time that I had there, that's no problem. I can play and listen just to because the bird is close. 
And of course, when I'm ready, I can just simply go ahead and save. This is completely Chromebook friendly and I would be able to put it right into my Google Drive. Now that I've saved it in my Google Drive, when I go to my um, is the condor larger than the whale, I'm simply going to say insert audio. This is the new feature. Now don't panic if you don't see it yet. It is a slow rollout in all educational domains through the month of April and May. So I'm going to say insert audio and I'm going to go ahead and hit my recent and there is my whale mp3 that I saved. Select. It gives you a play icon. I can move this icon around to anywhere that I want. Now what I really love about this is the default is this play button, but did you know we can actually change what that image looks like? I can actually replace the image and I'm going to go ahead and just search the web for a happy face and when I go ahead and I look for that happy face, I can choose that as mine and I've now changed the icon of my play button, which is a lot of fun, especially if you're telling some interactive stories or you want kids to perhaps put in a different audio piece for maybe an important fact, a question, some information, you could have a different icon for each. Now what I can also do is I can do some format options for the actual audio. When I have the audio button selected, I can select format options. And it will let me choose, when do I want it to start playing? Is it automatically when I go to that slide or is it when I click it? Do I want to stop that audio as soon as the slide changes? This is nice, especially if you want to be able to click through a presentation at your own pace without having that audio to keep playing. And you can also loop the audio. So those are some options that you have when you're creating this. When students want to press play, I think that the whale is bigger. They can go ahead and do that within the audio of the slides. Now, what I love is there's lots of different templates and resources out there to do this, but Eric Kurtz has given us a really fun activity from his site, Control Alt Achieve, where students are able to look at the short vowel and long vowel sounds. On each one of the slides, they're given some audio and some images for them to be able to practice, categorize, and organize those words. This template is attached for you below to give it a try when you do get your audio slides. Okay, the last thing that I want to be able to share for you is to be able to have students make their own GIFs. Now, there's lots of ways to do this out there. We know that we can create them in Google Slides by duplicating slides and publishing it to the web and having it play. There's different GIF maker tools. But I really love this add-on for Google Slides so that it's built right in so that students can turn whatever Google Slides they've made into a GIF. This is fantastic for exit tickets. This is great to show scientific processes and chemical reactions, parts of a plant, life cycles. Um, it's also really fantastic to show mathematical processes. Simply what it does is it will take all of the slides you have in a presentation and put them together in an animation. How I have here is I have a math question using arrays that I would like students to solve and then turn into an animation. Let me show you how I did that. So the first step that I have is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be able to have students look at the prompts that I've given them. How would they represent an array for three times four? And so what students can do is they can start to insert things like shapes. And they can even duplicate shapes simply by saying control D. Of course, I can fill in my shapes. I can say control D and it duplicates them. And I can start to line them up and do those different pieces. Now, as the students are working, what they're going to do is they're going to start to slowly move their slides. You can see what I mean here. So in this particular case, the student created there are three groups of four. Now what happened is they duplicated the slide and then they just slowly started to move one circle at a time. Duplicate the slide, not the shape, duplicate the slide and slowly start to move your different shapes. What this will look like as we go down the slide, it's a little bit like a flip book. You can start to see how the students went through and created an array based on groupings so they can start to visualize the mathematical concept of moving from equal groups to an array and having the appropriate um, equation that goes with it. Now, how do we put this all together? We're going to use the add-on called Bjorn's GIF Maker. We can find this just in the add-on store and I put it, the link for it for you below. Now what I can simply do when I'm ready to have this be animated is I go to my add-ons I choose the GIF maker and I say start. It gives me some options on the right hand side for size and what I'm going to say is generate. 
It's going to slowly go through each one of the slides in your presentation. Obviously, this takes longer depending on the length of the slides that you have. Once this is all completely done, it's going to have that um, animation created for you. And then you'll be able to insert it right here on your slide with the complete animation or, of course, save it to your Google Drive. So now that you can see it's done, it says upload to Google Drive or insert onto current slide. So that's what I'm going to do. It's going to insert the image for me. And then I can have a complete animation ready to show my entire process for my math. And there you have it. The students can see their work come to life with GIFs. So that's our episode today. Um, I hope you enjoyed some of these tips and tricks and techniques. Really give it a try to show how we can make learning be interactive and engaging for our students and have them have some help to be able to demonstrate their learning. In addition to today's content, I do also have some information below about how to create your own magazines using Google Slides, as well as access to hundreds of resources and templates that are Google Slides. And there's some information and resources for any of you out there who are brand new to Google Slides and just want that very slow, getting started video series. So thanks for tuning in for episode three. I hope you've been enjoying May Google be with you and we're back again next week um, so that we can keep the Google fun going. Bye everybody.